Probably. It'll be interesting to see what Sorry, this keep event I did. I went ahead and placed the order last week. I just, I mean, I could have canceled it, but I figured. So yeah.
second Sunday of Easter continues to bring us uh, by our baptism with Christ through death into the grave into this glorious place of new life, new life present through faith in Jesus and life eternal uh, as his promise that risen Christ as he once appeared behind locked doors to give forgiveness and peace and spirit uh, comes to be with us uh, this day as well. So blessed again uh, to be able to worship with you and receive in faith what Jesus is promising. Blessed to have the choir sing. Uh, they will sing between the Old Testament and the epistle. It's divine service setting four. Hymns are marked on the sideboard of the bulletin and the boards up here as well as they normally are. Would encourage you in terms of some of the events and happenings of the Lord's mission and ministry amongst us to take a look at the calendar. Uh, I will be over in Kearney, it'll be a back and forth, uh, but we have Spring Pastors Conference. I get to, uh, you can pray for us, it'll just be joyful, uh, an opportunity to sit at the feet of one of my professors, uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew's Gospel through, prof through Professor Gibbs, and uh, he, he's teaching us a couple sections on Matthew's Gospel, so that'll be good. Um, I need to request elected officers to meet in the choir loft for three to five minutes. I just need to bounce off of you what to do with the council meeting that we have scheduled Tuesday. Unexpectedly, kind of last second, there was a meeting that was called uh, down at Heartland. They had to adjust to their delegate schedule. So uh, let's meet real quick and kind of decide how we want to proceed. We do have a scheduled delegates meeting Tuesday and I wanna bounce around some ideas. Uh, it'll just be real quick, it won't take too long. So we'll do that after church today. Um, yeah, you can read through. Um, are there obvious announcements that need to be spoken and I haven't brought to your attention yet this morning? Very well. Uh, Divine Service setting four, 907 will be our opening hymn. First, please, with the ringing of the bells.
page 203, invite you to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sin, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are again this morning gathered together to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the very real body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, first let's consider our own unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from this sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son Jesus to die for you. It's for his sake, Jesus' sake, that he forgives you of all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by Jesus' own authority, I therefore forgive you of all of your sins, doing so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. To the bulletin insert, we'll pray together, we'll sing uh, portions of Psalm 81, our intro to the day. Like newborn infants, alleluia. Long for the pure spiritual milk of the word, alleluia. Sing aloud to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. In distress you called, and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will Fill it, and with honey from the rock I would satisfy you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Like newborn infants, alleluia. Long for the pure spiritual milk of the word, alleluia. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth, goodwill from God in heaven. birth. We praise and bless you, Father. Your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King. To you, O soul begotten, the Son, we pray, O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our 
sin away. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Our heartfelt cry, where you in power are seated at God's right hand on high. For you alone are holy, you only are the Lord. Forever and forever be worshipped and adored. You with the Holy Spirit alone our Lord most high in God the Father's glory Amen our glad reply The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for today, the second Sunday of Easter, is from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a sound and behold a rattling and the bones came together bone to its bone. And they looked and behold there were sinews on them. And flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived, and they stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost, and we are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O oh my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land, then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken and will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The epistle is from 1 John chapter 5. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he is born concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. invite you to uh, stand to receive the Holy Gospel, John's Gospel, chapter 20. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. These things are written that you Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger in the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. You know, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess the Christian faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, 
who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our hymn of the day, 470. Please be seated.
He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia and amen. Risen, life-giving Jesus at work through his word, that in hearing them we may believe, and by believing have life and salvation as our present and eternal possession. That's the word for our consideration together. John's gospel, uh, our Lord's appearance in bodily form, risen uh, on that first Easter Sunday and the second as well. Well, can these bones live? Uh, that's the big question, really, in the Old Testament and the gospel for today. Uh, the prophet Ezekiel brings it to the forefront of our hearts and our minds as he stands where the Lord has placed him, as he looks around in that Ezekiel 37 picture and sees kind of a glimpse of the world around. Everywhere he looks, he sees. Right? What a challenging vision to be able to see that valley full of those bones, dry, dusty. They've been there so long, they're bleached by the sun, no life in them. Kind of a picture of that valley of the shadow of death through which the good shepherd Jesus in Psalm 23 is always leading us, his people, so there's hope as we are attached to Jesus through faith in his promises, and yet in the here and the now, really a challenge. As you look around there with the prophet Ezekiel, you have to kind of feel like maybe in the moment it's almost an end, an end for them, and maybe that would mean then an end for us as well. And it's there in that situation that God asks seemingly the impossible. Can these bones live? And I don't know how to take it. It almost seems like at first blush that the prophet Ezekiel kind of just uh, takes the safe route. I don't know if I'd say sidesteps the question, but just kind of, you, Lord, you know. Maybe that's us sometimes, kind of saying, don't ask me these big questions about eternal life and living a life after death when I'm kind of just sometimes feeling like I'm having a hard time keeping my head above the waters, dealing with the realities in and of the here and the now. I don't know if these bones can live, but you as the giver of life and sustainer of life, oh Lord, you know. And then comes the answer from God and he says, prophesy. And prophesy, speaking the living and life-giving word of God, the prophet Ezekiel does in God's word when you hear it and believe it and receive it, always accomplishes the purpose for which God does send it. It's never an empty word or an idle word, but God at work bringing life through his word. And so you can see that in Ezekiel 37, down there in that valley, he speaks and all of a sudden the bones are coming together with a great rattling. For a time, Ezekiel says he saw the vision and that they were still there lying lifeless in that valley on the ground. Kind of a disturbing image just a little bit, but maybe not so much if you think about it in terms of Genesis chapter 2. When God, the giver of life, creates Adam's body from the dust of the earth, and for a moment it is lying there lifeless, the body is complete, but waiting to receive, do you remember what is given that animates it? Right? God speaks and God personally breathes his life and the spirit of life into the lifeless body of, a of, of Adam when it comes to life. That's a similar recreation work picture that we get here from the prophet Ezekiel. God speaks and he shows us that he's not yet done recreating and says to, to Ezekiel, prophesy the breath of life, prophesy to the spirit and breathe life into these slain bodies that they may live. And again, God's powerful word accomplishing the purposes for which he sends it, that's what happens. The prophet prophesies to the breath and the breath of God, the spirit of life comes and enters into them and all of a sudden they're together and they're whole and they're strong and they're beautiful and they're up on their feet and that 
valley is full of a mobile marching army ready to go, standing the victory of Jesus who has given this life. Can these bones live? You got through the word of the prophet your answer. Yes. Because word and spirit are sent to recreate them and cause them to be born anew and born from above. But what about when the one who is dead is the word himself? Is there hope if you put yourself in the shoes of the John 20 disciples, is there hope for you, hope for them when you've seen Jesus hanging on a cross and his lifeless body placed unmoving into a cold granite borrowed man's tomb? Thomas was doubtful. And actually, I need to say it stronger than that. Thomas's issue really isn't doubt. We call him Doubting Thomas, but it's not like he's on a teeter-totter, bouncing back and forth, wavering this way and that way. He is absolutely certain. Right? When Jesus deals with him and calls him to repent, it's not doubt that he calls Thomas to the carpet for, but he's dealing with his disbelief and his unbelief. Thomas, before he saw the Lord, was quite certain that dead people can't live again. And he absolutely was not going to believe it. Not until he had seen it with his own two eyes. Can these bones, can those bones live again? The most important question of all, especially when it comes to the body of Jesus. Because if there's no Easter after Good Sunday... Because if his holy flesh and body and bones don't live after he dies, our death in our place, if he doesn't live after all of that, then what hope is there for us here in this valley in which we live? But then again, what if he is risen indeed exactly as he says that he is? That's the good news that the other disciples share with Thomas. Indeed, these bones can live, and they do live, and we've seen him for ourselves, but Thomas, for the moment, still kind of struggling to take the words of the disciples to his heart. He wants to see and to touch and to handle. By the way, you miss out on church, and you miss out like Thomas did on one Sunday. You miss out on a lot of really good things. And yet isn't Jesus really wonderful in his compassion and his care and his way of dealing with, with them and with all of us and their doubt and their disbelief and their unbelief? How patient he is with his people who question and who wonder and who struggle what it all means to believe. Even as we fight against not our doubting flesh but our own unbelieving flesh, Jesus comes to us and gives us in his word and his grace what we need to live once again. He was so patient, so tender and compassionate with Thomas that he appears, not only did he appear on the first Easter Sunday to the disciples when they were together miraculously behind locked doors in his body with good gifts to give, but appears to Thomas a week later. He appears and brings him peace and speaks the word of invitation, holds out his body and says, put your finger here and see my hands, put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Believe what? These bones do live. And he could believe that. Not just because he had seen it, 
For how blessed also, Jesus says, are those who have not seen and yet believe. And how does that happen? John tells us in this gospel that that happens as the spirit-filled word of Jesus enters our ears and goes to our hearts. These are written, the words of Jesus are written, that you too may believe that Jesus is the Christ and by believing have life in his name. And that's the same work that Thomas is hearing as well. The life-giving word of Jesus doing its work amongst the disciples. That, that John 20 upper room experience is just as loaded with, it's not Christmas, it's Easter, but it's just Jesus is given and giving and giving all of these gifts to give now that he has popped out alive beyond death in the grave. He breathes into them the breath of life and gives them his Holy Spirit. He proclaims and promises that there is now peace between God and sinners below because he has died our death and risen again. The resurrected life that is shining and evident in his body, he wants to implant in theirs as well through faith and and to them and from them out into the world will go this glorious word of forgiveness. They receive from Jesus the authority to bring his good gifts into the world. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you, Jesus says, such that if you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. But if you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Right? See what it means for us. The wages of sin is death. Sin will have its impact upon all of us. Not to minimize that reality, but there's a part of, given the reality of Easter, where we say, okay, so we go that way. Let us crumble to the dust and become bones that we are. It's what our sins have earned for us, but nevertheless, Nevertheless, Jesus the Christ in body does live and he gives his church the gift of forgiveness and because he forgives us of all of our sins, these bones and these bodies and these lives lives of ours not only can, but they do live. That's the joyful message that Jesus sends with the church out into the world. A world of darkness and death and encountering people that could just use a little bit of joy and a little bit of hope, this message of peace. This message of new life, that with Christ the Lord, there is forgiveness for all sins because he lives beyond death in the grave. With Christ the Lord, there is life that reaches beyond death in the grave so that we can go forward with our lives not uncertain as to what will happen after our life in this world, but absolutely certain that because Jesus is risen, these bones, these bodies, these beautiful lives of ours will live once again as well. And not only then in the day to come, Part of the joy of baptism is getting death out of the way so that we both die with Jesus and are raised with Jesus. And right now it begins in the lives of you, his precious people, who have the word of forgiveness, who receive that word in faith, and you are alive even now as you take these bodies out into the world wherever the Lord Jesus in his love is sending you. He does guide and go with you. Right? That's the victory that overcomes the world, which is our faith. And so this morning again, we join with Thomas, falling before our Lord in faith and confessing, my Lord and my God, blessed are those who have not seen and yet still do believe that these bones do live in the saving name of Jesus, who lives beyond death in the grave with life present and life eternal by way of forgiveness to offer. Alleluia and amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We'll continue now uh, with the prayers of the church. I invite you to stand as able.
Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father and Holy Baptism, the children of your church are born again into a living hope. Feed and nourish our faith. Bring us through every trial and lend strength and joy to our praises of the risen Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord God of Israel, you sent your spirit upon your people of old and brought them back from exile. Breathe upon your church again today to renew our faith and strengthen our fellowship that we may stand before you in your grace as a holy army. We pray for your strength and your blessing upon your church wherever she is located, including this body of believers of Zion Worms, also our brothers and sisters in Christ at Christ Columbus in Nebraska. We pray for your mission, the proclamation of the gospel in places such as Belize. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, give courage to all pastors as they preach and teach the word of God, that all who hear may believe, and that believing they may live in righteousness and godliness until the day Christ returns as judge and Lord of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, remember those who have wandered from the household of faith. Faithful to your promises, work all things in their lives to remind them of their need for your unending grace and your steadfast love, that they might return to the faith and delight in your Son, crucified and risen for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you appoint rulers and officials for the sake of earthly order and peace. Bless those that you have placed in authority in federal state and local governments. Give them the desire to serve with integrity and honor and to work for the benefit of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, as your son's wounds brought gladness and peace to troubled disciples, give also your presence, strength, comfort, and health to the troubled in our midst. We pray especially for those who are recovering. We remember Betty, Naomi, Pat, Tanya, Janie, those that we know and name in our hearts right now. Comfort also those who weep with the blessed joy of an Easter morning in their grief. Bring them through into the promise of the paradise, the heavenly home that Jesus has won for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father in heaven, you gave the testimony of your spirit and water and blood that poured from Christ's wounded side. Grant that having received this testimony in the water of baptism, we may also receive it in the body and blood of Jesus here in this Holy Supper, and in this way overcome the world by our faith in him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, give us all good things and those that are beneficial to us and for our salvation. Keep away from us all things harmful. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Continue with the offering.
the preface, page 208. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow upon us and all of creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh. You laid upon him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim, Shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest. Sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation. For you've had mercy upon us and you've given your only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For Christ our Pas Paschal Lamb, Passover Lamb has been sacrificed. By his death he has redeemed us from the bondage to sin and death and by his resurrection he has delivered us unto new life in him. Grant us to keep the feast in sincerity and in truth, faithfully eating his body given into death and drinking his life blood poured out for our salvation until we pass through death to the promised land of life eternal. Hear us as we pray together in Jesus' name and as he has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Amen.
let your servant depart in heavenly peace, for I have seen the glory of your redeeming grace, a light to lead the Gentiles unto Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you've refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in living in faith towards you and also in a fervent love toward one another. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, he who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. 917, our closing hymn.